Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dungeons and Do Rags, which is a super. Ooh, I'm probably loud. One second. There we go. Which is a super, super black as fuck uh, uh, D and D campaign uh, run by yours truly. Hi, my name is Omega Jones, also known as a Critical Bard. I am very, very nervous, and that's okay. I have water. I have Jesus. I have uh, God and anime on my side. We're good. We're good, honestly. Uh, but you know what? Enough about me. I want you all to meet this wonderful, amazing, awesome cast. We're going to go in order. I see you on screen. So tell people who you are, what you do. Give them the whole shabang. And let's do this. We're going to start with the reason we're actually all here. Milady Confetti. Me, little me. <laughs> I, hi, everyone. I'm a Lady Confetti. This is my first ever D&D campaign. I am cosplaying as my character. Had this little thing in the closet. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put this on today. Still had the tag on it. So I'm like, look at look at God. Won't he do it? Um, <laughs> I'm very nervous because I don't, not fully, I don't know what to fully expect. I've been studying. So hopefully um, I won't be a full embarrassment. But I'm ready to go. <laughs> you are good. Uh, next, uh, 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 one of the uh, most amazing people out there, uh, creative director, content creator, boss, uh, <gasps> Cypher of Tear. Mm. Oh, it's me. Hi. Um, I'm sorry. I got distracted because I had to go get a notebook. I'm Tanya. Hi, Cypher of Tear. Uh, you've seen me around the internet for many years, being mad about video games on the internet professionally, streaming on my own channel for about seven years, and uh, playing a lot of D&D professionally for the last three years. So if you like Rebels War Deep, if you like Black Dice Society, if you saw the one-shot goose shenaniganry that I did, uh, I do this for a living. And so I want to do this here with all my Black folks and have one of the Blackest of Black D&D campaigns we could ever have. In fact, it's so Black, I'm like looking where I can get some watermelon and some catfish ah! when we're done. <laughs> 
Uh, J-Rock the God, someone who's new to me, but I'm very, very excited to be able to meet them on a more, uh, I don't want to say personal because I might kill their character, uh, but a more <laughs> close level. I mean, mm-hmm. on that level, wouldn't it be personal? Because I'm going to have to get a refresh. So you may not know yeah. Latrell very long, but y'all hopefully going to get used to me, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm J-Rock the God. Um, this is my second ever long-term campaign. I've done a couple of one-shots for uh, some charity events. This is my uh, second ever long-term campaign. I'm very excited about this. Once I heard this, I was just like, immediately, yes, yes, let me get this right here, right now. Uh you can find me on Twitch and Twitter as the uh, the same J Rock the God. I'm known as a guy who plays games without the use of his hands. So if y'all, that's just me. I, I ain't got nothing else right now. No, I don't even try. Juice killers and DBD, <laughs> right? J Rock is a professional. <laughs> professional. I professional. saw that clip. I saw. Well, we, do we need to gas you up? Because real quick. A whole god, literally, it's in the Period. name. Professional with all appendages and could probably just square up with you in DVD anytime. All right. Any well, not game, me. But anywhere. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I won't, <laughs> I won't go that far. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and take it from here because, you know, I'm a professional too. You know, I, right? I like to talk high. <laughs> Right? I'm Chelsea Bites, aka, you know, Chelsea, the one around the block who likes to talk too much. And I stream on Twitch and I've done a few hosting gigs on the side. So you might have seen me around, but I also love to play DD and Pathfinder. I've gotten to do a game with Crit on Damsel's Dice and Everything Nice, which was lit. Got to experience that for like the first time. And it was just, oh, wow, starstruck. But I'll be playing Liliana. Your, oh, do you want us to in- introduce our characters too? Or. Very soon. Or do you want to wait? Okay, okay, okay. Very well, soon. I'm Chelsea. <laughs> I'm and, I, and I'm about to be loud as so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> turn the volume down, but there we go. Bless. Uh, uh, as I said, y'all know me. I am Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Um, actor, vocalist, hot mess incarnate, uh, producer, uh, DM. Uh, I am the Tiamat of this table right now. So many heads. Oops, sorry about it. Um, anyway, uh, we're gonna have some fun, but before we get in, I also want to shout out a couple of people. I want to shout out Zer Jester. Uh, Zero actually created both the emote and the uh, logo you see on screen. Well, you get saw on screen for Dungeons and Durags and did it in 24 hours. So, uh, big mm. shout outs to them. Awesome individual. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you all can also can see on screen, we do have a sub goal. Um, so let's try to, we don't have to hit the number, you know, uh, but uh, we would shame. love to, <laughs> we would love to hit that number and show that you support black creators and black art and, you know, just doing the dang thing. There's currently a hype train going on right now. Thank you. We're very appreciative. A uh, uh, periodic table uh, on all that. Uh, and there will be a command coming soon with the uh, with the uh, information for the cast because people have been asking about dating to the cast directly. So uh, we'll be getting that up as soon as possible. So we can stick around for that. But again, just support us, support the show, support this um, um, this uh, Twitch channel, and we're very excited. Uh, there's nothing else really to talk about. So um, talk it's about time. That, uh, uh, that 130% hype train happening in that chat. That, that is 100 and, uh, nope, 179, 179 8, 90, 96 uh, seven percent uh, Look, this means y'all support us and we're very, very excited. But <laughs> let's, Thank you. let's go ahead and get this going. There's something even the cast haven't seen and it's fine. Just a little I'm intro scared. video. Uh, oh a big Uh-oh. shout out a big <laughs> shout out to uh, to Zach oh. Gelling, uh, Elf Sung for creating the intro video for this uh, Magic. for this uh, uh, campaign. So sit back, relax, and it's time to be black as fuck. <laughs> How do you change your name? <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Sorry.
<laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all, y'all are seeing that we're already going to be messy and we don't apologize. Anywho, uh, <laughs> while things get figured out in the background, let us begin. Drip, drop. The sound of a steady beat. Ah! Liquid upon ground. Drip, drop. The rhythm picks up. Drip like a crescendo. More and more siblings to the two original sounds, creating a discordant melody. Drop, quicker still. It continues, it grows, it amplifies. Crash! The distinctive boom of thunder as the dripping continues. It's raining, but inside is dry, free from moisture, mostly. A woman can be seen sitting upon a chair, an unnatural sweat running down her face, but it doesn't faze her much. She listens to the sound outside, the liquid melody ringing true to her ears. There's another figure sitting across from her. An orb floating between a couple of fingers, like an arcane metronome, waiting, waiting, waiting. The sweaty one speaks first. All you have to do is say yes. The orb stops as his eyes flicker over to her. Hmm. Another crash of thunder. Time is ticking, friend. I will ask once more, do we have a deal? The orb grows brighter and brighter and brighter, a shift from a stark white color to a sapphire blue as his own eyes flash. An answer unspoken is given. In the distance, one by one, four individuals all wake up from a dream. Whether they go back to sleep or not is up to them, as that is quite irrelevant. What is important is the burning sensation that sweeps across each of their hands. And as each of them look down, they glance upon their fingers until it stops at their right ring finger. A serpent eating its own tail, encircling ever moving. It appears briefly before it fades away just as quickly as it came. But that's not really important either. What is important is that it's a beautiful morning in Ingleport. We are all having a wonderful day. You can hear the sounds of laughter as kids run across these, the roads. You hear singing in the distance as it sounds like some kind of party potentially is going on. It is time for the Ouroboros Festival. This festival is named after a certain leader of this city, Ingleport. Ingleport is known for its merchants bustling with pop-up shops and it's somewhat of a tourist trap, honestly. If you're on a trip to this specific land, this specific city, you know that this is a place to wander and a place of wonder. But that's just a bit of the story. Right now there are crowds gathering, uh, multitudes of people. You see humans, you see elves, you see Dragonborn, Genasi, maybe an ASMR or two, maybe. You see them all gathering around one stage, one giant stage with banners hung up, one of blue, one of red, one of gold, and one of green. They all cascade down, flowing in the wind as people still scream in in jubilance and in, in glee. This is the festival of Ouroboros. You hear, get your owl bro, owl bear brats here, two for one sale. As a a merchant is trying to sell off their meat, is it processed? Is it real? Does it actually matter? Does it taste good? That's the important question. Someone else is speaking to a young child. Have you ever seen a staff like this before? 
the wonder that it fills you as there's a couple of spiders crawling up and down and they all disappear one by one. Hey, come back here! Another voice can be heard as a dragonborn screams out before they begin to speak in a very guttural sound as someone grabbing hold of a purse of sorts starts to run away. Their body begins to lock up as a spell is attempted to be cast on them before he shot. It's quickly counterspelled by someone that they happen to know, an accomplice. As these two get away, the dragonborn screaming out in terror and frustration as, of course, one of their glorious goods is stolen. Just another day in Angleport. As the folks are gathering amongst this crowd, we can see four individuals doing whatever they do best. The question is, who do we see first? I'm going to roll a d4. That's not a d4. That's a d6. Because five should not exist when there's four characters. <laughs> eh, eh. Also, can we get d 4 to be picked up easier? There we go. One. We see a young woman by the name of, well, I'll let her tell that. <gasps> Arella? Who do we see? What do you look like, more importantly? So, I'm Arella. Arella is a dark-skinned elven woman. Am I saying that right? Please correct me also. You're saying Damn, everything right. If I'm incorrect in any way. Appreciate it. She is high-born, royalty, walks kind of with a chip on her shoulder. Um long curly blue hair curly kinky you know for visuals um she wears a long ornate royal white dress with gold accents surrounding what she looks like and she's about five three and in i would say heeled boots yes that's who she is when she walked in and has obviously very long elven ears and why are they in Ingleport at this moment? Well, it's a part of the realm and she wanted to enjoy the festival and see what the common folk were doing. The common folk. And I'm assuming you- Oh, should I not say that? Oh no, well, this, you're is royalty? Perfect. this is perfect. Oh no, look, <laughs> it says everything we need to hear. Um, she also might have left her royal duties for the day because she got bored. Valid. The question is, has Arella ever been to this festival before? No. This is her first one. Then what is she most excited to see? She's most excited to see dancing, most excited to see pyrotechnics, but also really excited to see um, the merchants and what kind of maybe off off key items they would have, you know, for as far as like magic wands or, you know, weapons and things like that. We're going to start this off. First roll of the campaign. I'm going to have you simply roll a charisma check. You have a number that's at the top of your D&D Beyond screen that says charisma. Shout out to D&D &D &D Beyond for uh, being our, 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 our character seat of choice uh, for this campaign. Uh, you can see it says C-H-A, which means charisma. You have a number. You're going to roll a D20, which looks something like that. Roll that, add that number that you see. Perfect. And tell me what that number is. Well, it's on my dress, so I'm going to re-roll that. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be going on my no, expensive this, royal dress. Uh-uh. This, this is already happening. I rolled a four. I rolled four plus... What's your charisma um, uh, number? It should be a plus something. Uh, it says plus zero. You have a plus zero to your charisma. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get a four. Uh, you notice that folk have seen you. Um, obviously, they know when royalty is here. Uh, obviously. And as they should. As they should. But that doesn't mean they are excited to see you. Uh, you can see people, <laughs> you know, you get like the kids who are like, oh, look at the pretty princess and you see like a mother like move the kid along like we don't talk to her um they respectful but I'm never black. 
Never because you're black, because uh. you're royalty. Um, and the question is, what has the royal family done for Engelport? But we'll get back to that. Uh, regardless, you aren't buffed away. You aren't rebuked by any means. But it's just simply your presence is noted, and that's that. No one's necessarily trying to reach out to you specifically. But you walk along, and you happen to see a a couple of uh, bards playing. Um, one's playing... Um, somewhat of a violin-esque uh, thing um, playing somewhat okay, but that's not really impo- the important part. The important part are the three triplets that are now running around, the three Earth Genasi triplets, their skin uh, almost pink and black um, with the different jewels coming out of the hair, one almost forming bang to knots, the other one's kind of forming like, it seems like there's an afro, and the other one's simply bald. Um, and they're just simply playing and la 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 la, and the kids see you and they go, oh, it's oh, it's, and the other one's trying to like pull her away, saying no, stop, don't go to her. And the one, the youngest one is trying to reach out, but she's so pretty. What do you do? Oh, well, after I hear the one child say, "You're so pretty," I'm like, I know, right? I, uh, I'm very humble. How do you? I, you just I want to wear what you're wearing how can I wear your um your pretty dress well sweetie you have to be born into this and then you get fancy things like this I have to be like born this into this yes how do you how how do you get born into a, a dress you get born into a dress when a mama and a papa do the birds and the bees and then you're born you hear as the violinist starts to play (laughs) staring at you now trying to like cut the conversation but also doesn't want to disrespect you right in front of them Uh, but they continue to play and just stare at you as you're talking to children but they don't say anything and the girl is just Oh, so when Mama and Papa they they go see the bees in the grove, then yeah. once they see the bees, then I can wear a dress like you. One day, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Look, do you hear? They say I gotta go see the bees in the grove, and then I can wear a dress like her. And they just kind of run off. Uh, and the other kids like, what? <laughs> okay. And they start to run off as well. And you see the violin is just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and as you watch them run off, we will turn over to another. If I roll another one on this D4, okay. We will turn over to another. Chelsea, who do we see? Absolutely. You see this very tall drink of water. Okay, no, no, not a drink of water. Mm -hmm. But I am a very tall Tabashi. And if you don't know what a Tabashi is, it is like a cat person. And my cat has a kind of like a black, like base fur pure black but then it has like these nice inlays of gray stripes and then around the eyes they have like hints of brown around it and what i'm wearing you know if you want to go by uh, your local bourgeois and pick this up i'm wearing like a half hood so it's like wraps around my shoulders very mm-hmm. intricate red and golds and and blue tassels and i have like a hood over my head and i've got a leather you know vest that kind of peeks out of it and it stops at my midriff i've mm-hmm. thought about this quite a bit okay and okay like, <laughs> right yeah hear this take notes take notes of course and then um i'm also wearing a satchel which is very important to me because i carry my notes everywhere because I love to write stories about everything that I've heard and and what I get to see and hear and all these towns that I've blown through and I am wearing a I'm wearing some nice leather pants you know something convenient because I don't like to you know get too fancy I like to keep it practical whenever I need to just get out of a place and because I am a Tabashi I have nice wraps around my heels but I don't necessarily wear shoes so I'm pretty decked out pretty decked out mm. i haven't i haven't got any gloves that work for me yet though gotcha but yeah and your name is again sorry i want to make sure i heard my it. name after that lovely description is liliana because i couldn't get Tatiana out of my head so 
You know what? Are. That's valid. Who knows? Zatiana might come <laughs> up in this campaign sometime. Uh, so Liliana, what would you be doing in Angleport at this moment? Right now, I've been going from, Liliana has gone from town to town to mm -hmm. town. She's quite a traveler. Mm -hmm. So she's brushed into Ingleport in search of some light work just to kind of pay the bills, get another place to stay for the next couple of nights and see what interesting people are around. Mm -hmm. I like to sit up and kind of be the fly on the wall and listen and just observe and people watch because I clearly have no social skills to myself. I'm very, very introverted, even though I don't seem to, <laughs> I'm not putting that off right now, but Liliana is. So in her head, she's super outgoing. She's super fun. But when she's actually talking to people, it's really meek and quiet. And I don't know what to say, but I get the job done. If I, if I ever need some work, I get it done. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. So you being a traveler going from town to town, city to city, village to village, is it fair to say you've been to Ingleport before or is this your first time? This is pretty new to me. Most of the towns that I visited are kind of like outskirt towns, so there's not so much diversity. I've been, well, I'm, I'm kind of a reclusive, so I try to keep to myself and I try not to get into too much and too, too fast, but I got, I just couldn't fight the urge to go and see what it was like in a bigger city. So mm. yeah, this is like my first time kind of drinking in the sights. It's very exciting. It is. Um, so since you haven't been here and this festival is pretty well known, what is something that you would be interested in seeing? The, or, markets, the markets and the taverns. I want to see what people are buying. I want to see what people are wearing. I want to see what people look like, because there are just so many people I haven't gotten to see. I, I'm from a forest, so mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time in that forest, mm. and I just I just don't get to see much. So other than going out and kind of looking at what's, what's to buy and what's to wear, I mm -hmm. like to listen to people in in the ends and hear what type of adventures they go on, because, you know, I'm not an adventurer. I, I just like to sit back and, and hear what other adventurers are doing. It sounds... Like a marvelous time, a marvelous time. So as you're kind of wandering and, and roaming, um, you kind of probably saddle up to like a, a light post or something. You're just kind of just watching just for a moment. And behind you, you hear, hey, hey, you. Me? Yeah. And if you would turn down, turn it down. If you turn around, you notice you don't see anyone until you look down. And you see right before you is about a three foot uh, kobold, um, a red kobold, red brown kobold handling uh, a bunch of fabrics in their hand. I go, you look like someone who could really use some nice things. Do you want to what do you want to buy stuff? Shh, shh, shh. I get down on their level. I'm like, shh, I'm so I. I don't want anything. I just, I'm just here. But look at this. This is so nice. You see, I just, I, you see a I, nice black shawl. Uh, it's almost like, oh. it's almost like um, iridescent uh, with uh, hints of blue and greens in it. Um, you say, that's what it's from a displacer beast. It would be really good for you. It makes you invisible. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. I, Only it, five you, gold. Uh, just, uh, I, I'll buy it if, if that'll make you quiet. Will that make you quiet? It's already loud. Uh, As you can tell, there are so many. There's still people going around. This festival is kicking off, and he's just using this moment. He saw someone, and he has come to you going, this is really nice. Only five gold. I'm sure you can use it. I, 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 I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. And I give him five gold, which I, I hope I have. I think I do. I'll, you, I'll just, you I, do. I go through my purse. You do. I'm like, okay, okay, here. And I <laughs> take it and I wrap it over me. And I'm like, oh, oh thank you. Will... You're going to really like that. If you thank whisper you. the magic words, which it, you can make sure you can go invisible. I hear you. Be quiet. I'll tell your mom about something. My mom's dead. <laughs> I'm another child. I'm sorry, but you need to be quiet. <laughs> no, I, 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 I slink away as fast as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And they run Thank off. You. Can you make a perception check, please? Or can you make an yeah, investigation? Investigation or, or, or a perception is up to you. I will do a perception because it's better for me. 
what do we get? D&D Beyond, 13. Okay. With the 13, uh, you can tell that uh, this shawl that gave you definitely is glittering and, 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 and very has a sheen to it. Um, but as you remove your hand, you swear you see a little bit of black on your fingers. Oh my God. And they are gone. You do not see them at all. <sighs> and as you ponder over this moment, we are going to switch over to another. Tanya, Cypher of Tear. Where yes. would we find you? What do you look like? What would you be doing at this moment? Um, well, what I look like, I am a, a tall tiefling, uh, brown skin, mm -hmm. and um, as you can see, large curving white horns. I'm in, I'm actually in studded leather armor and I've got a great sword. So I'm just, while I, while I am one who prefers a fight, I'm just kind of hanging out in the shadows of the market, observing all of this. And I've seen everything that Liliana just went through and I just laugh a little bit under my breath. Uh, my tiefling has uh, long locks, flame red tips and longer ears, but she, um, as my horns try to escape, um, her ears are not as long as those people would be accustomed to. And she has, gray silver eyes and she's just observing everything and on the other side of her hip she has a flute so she sometimes sings for her supper but often her song is of the blade hmm and what is her name her name is elvenia elvenia are you new to Elvin, uh, uh, to uh, Ingleport? <laughs> yes, I'm new to being an <laughs> Elvin. <laughs> uh, are you new to Ingleport? Uh, what might you I be am. doing here? Uh, I am here because I'm one curious about the festival, but two even more curious about the work I might pick up. Mm. My blade, my blade has been dry for far too long. Mm, that is valid. That's valid. That's valid. And since you're new to this festival, just like I've asked, what is something you would be interested in seeing at this festival specifically? I want to see what opportunities there might be for an enterprising tiefling such as myself. And also maybe see if there's a way to do one of those jobs that you just hear about that would supposedly give me enough gold to retire. I'm kind of mm. I'm kind of tired of being on the road. But, you know, as long as I get to wet my blade with the blood of my enemies, I don't care. Okay. So as you kind of observe, um, I get the feeling that, that that's something you tend to do. You kind of just sit back and watch what's happening, um, chiming in when you need to chime in. Uh, can you make me a perception check? Sure. Um, let's see if I have a plus on perception, because I... Two. Oh, I don't actually. So let's see if the dice agree with me. Uh, that is a 16. Ha ha. 16. As you stand there, you notice a figure kind of saddle up to you, and they're not necessarily um, watching the festival. It's more so as if they are noting your presence and coming to join you. Um, and they say, I don't think you're here for some silly old festival. Is that so? Oh, uh, mm, who might you be and why do you care? Oh, I'm just a shadow in the wind and I notice things. I'm very keen, my eyes. And you see they have these goggles on. Um, they almost look kind of silly, but even though they look silly, there's still a presence to them that kind of makes that not even be a factor. And mm -hmm. he says, I can tell when people want to do more than just run around and play games and see the glory of this festival. Something tells me that you want to do something else. Mm, you'd be accurate, you'd be accurate. What's in it for you? <laughs> Not much for me, actually. I just like to see people on their way. But I'm sure 
that if I do see you again, I could have something for you. Um, and he hands you a card. Um, he kind of like flicks it out, out open. Um, there's a flare to his movement and he hands it okay. to you. And if you read it, it says, for those who are curious, <clears throat> the man literally just says the man. I don't usually work for the man. This isn't the man you might think. Oh. Um, I'll, I'll be in touch, though. And they'll kind of just saddle away, just kind of turn. Um, and you notice that uh, they kind of, once they walk, they walk behind someone, and as they cross mm -hmm. them, they disappear. Okay. Um, All right. I, um, I, I look at this card and I pocket it, and I'm just, I'm curious. But I clearly can't follow him, so I'm just like, hmm. Give me a, actually, give me another perception check. I just want right. to see. Or if you are, if you are magical, which I know you are, you can give me an Arcana check as well. Oh yay! Oh, that was a fail. He discombobulated me so bad. I got a nat one. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. See, because the person he passed mm -hmm. has one of those Albear brats, and they are just going oh. to town. Like, oh my god, it's so good. Um, using that as an opportunity to get by. Um, and as you notice, this individual, we will switch to our final friend of the day, J Rock. Who are hey. you? What do we see before us? Uh, well, I'm Latrell, and Latrell is currently sitting outside, kind of in plain sight, but also in the shadows, which is how he basically lives his life. So just outside, sitting in a long red silky robe that completely hides the fact that Latrell is poor and has been his whole life. This is just like covering his armor that you can't see his uh his rather tethered armor underneath it and his blades that he keeps sheathed to the side he has this long black hair that kind of like fades into red mm -hmm. uh latrell's also a tiefling let me mention that as well so he's just dark skinned very fair face he looks he looks like a like a child kind of some somewhat in the face like very very young but he's been around and in the uh the back streets of Ingleport for his whole life and he's been in some battles as well mm. and since he's been here you are very familiar with the festival you know yes, that this happens familiar. you would know that this happens every year every single year um it is an honored tradition that most people know not to skip out on it's not in a, a crime or an offense to do so but it's something that people just want to do. It is a a moment of of, of happiness um, for Ingleport. It has, I mean, it's a pretty nice town. But still, this is a moment where even the people who stick to the shadows are some of the folk who tend to um, be to themselves. They will even come out for a moment like this, just for a moment of sunshine. Um, and what might you be doing? Um, in this festival, in this area, since you're new to the festival, I mean, since you're not new to the festival, what might you be doing? Um, there's uh, different events happening. There's food stands, there's merchants, um, there's games. What might be interesting to you if you're doing anything? Oh, the same thing I'm always doing. I'm looking to see some rich people slipping up. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's valid. That's very yeah. valid. And rich people slipping up, you do see, as you see a a, a three foot kobold with a bunch of fabric. Um, running around, and they have stopped by two individuals, uh, two Goliaths actually, who are dressed to the nines. You can tell that they come from, you know, that that high sedity life. Uh, you know, um, they they have money and they flaunt it without even showing the money. Um, and you see this kobold is finding an opportunity, and he's speaking to him though. Oh, you want this uh, fabric? It looks really good. I'm sure you can use it. You have what if you have a silver one? Um, and they're just constantly talking. You can tell that they're not really caring or listening, uh, but they're just, you're, they're taking the time. And as they speak, um, you find an opportunity to kind of slip closely, you know, look around, see if anybody's watching. Uh, can you make me a two rolls? Can you make me a stealth check? 
And I'm going to give you this at, yes, you roll a d20 and add your stealth modifier, which would be your dex modifier plus your proficiency if you're proficient in stealth. Mm. Uh, uh, And you can actually roll that at advantage. So you'll roll two d20s and pick the higher number, then add the numbers. Uh, uh, So give me that roll. A 20. That's a 20 on the die? Yes. That's a natural 20. Hold it up. No, you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, that's a natural <laughs> 20. Yeah. Uh, you move in sure with ease. Uh, you slip uh, behind people. There's still, because at the end of the day, it is very bright outside, but there's a lot of things happening. So you're finding those moments to kind of weave through the cracks and get through to kind of be unseen, using people's natural shadows to kind of slip in and make sure that you aren't as noticeable. And you get right behind this, be these individuals. Um, can you now? make me a sleight of hand check. Same exact thing. Roll that d20. You're going to have advantage on this because you got a nat 20 on your first roll. Happy that. 13. Roll that dice one more time. Two. Okay. So 13 plus what is your uh, uh, sleight of hand modifier? So if you look on your D&D Beyond uh, uh, sheet, you can uh, go to, um, let me go check for you as well. Uh, do, 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 do. You're gonna click on your page. If you click on your page, you will see in the middle, there's a bunch of uh, like acrobatics and animal handling and mm. all that. You scroll down to sleight of hand. Plus what is two. that number? It's two. Plus two, yes. So the plus two, so that's a 15. Yep. Um, that's not bad. They are very much not really watching this moment. And you kind of slip in, um, kind of ease your hand into one of the pockets, and you pull out a couple of jewels. Um, yes, they quite literally had jewels in their pockets. Why? Because they got money. Money. Uh, and you pull out a diamond, and you pull out a ruby. Um, you also pull out a silver necklace um, that seems pretty basic, but there's always more than me, CI. Um, but these are the three things you find. Do you pocket them? What do you do with them? Um, since I'm from the area, I walk around and I just like, I see some kids playing and I walk over to the kids and I'm just like, Hey kids, hey. I got some, new, got some new toys for you. Just toss the jewels to them and just keep walking. What do I do with this? Uh, I mean, you fun. See- I thought kids like shiny things. Okay. And you see him and his best friend kind of just look at the jewels and they're like, you, you can at least give me like I don't know, a a, a toy gun or something, um, and they just start can, to, to to just play with the jewels. Not really sure what to do with them, <laughs> but you they can take trade them. that jewel in for a toy gun if you want to. Oh, oh, this is like that money stuff. Yeah, yeah. My parents don't have much of it, so uh, this might be good for them. Thank you. Do whatever you like with it. Have a good day. Okay. Um, and they just start to play with the uh, jewels still. They still kind of think it's a toy, but not a toy. So they just kind of, they kind of look at it. And as the four of you do what you do best, um, kind of hanging around, either buying uh, interesting uh, um, silks that may or may not be fake, um, talking to kids, showing off the privilege that you inherently have, meeting new contacts potentially who might find you in the future and giving away uh, money to those who may be in need. You all hear a gong. Mm, mm, mm. As you see the crowds begin to all shift towards one area. Um, There's a, again, a makeshift um, uh, stage built with four banners. Um, you see everyone kind of moving towards the stage in preparation of something. What do the four of you do? I hide in the back, but I want to be at a nice point to watch the whole proceedings. And I get my book out and I start writing down everything. Hmm. Um, I get in a position where I can see the stage and uh, hopefully still hear everything because I'm curious but I don't want to be perceived just yet. Mm-hmm. Valid. Well, I walk right to the front because people get out of my way as I walk past. And I take a seat right in the front where I belong. Bougie. Valid. 
Royalty. Bougie. Do I notice Arella walking, moving pretty much like there is a clear imposing her will, moving people out of the way, basically. Yeah, you don't even have to impose my will. They should move. (laughs) You don't even have to make a roll. You can very clearly see the crowds somewhat part as this 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 woman (laughs) begins to walk forward. Very elegant, um, very uptight, uh, chin tilted upward um, as the crowds are like kind of cowering. Almost cowering. At, it's like fear, respect, both. So yes, you definitely see an individual moving forward. I write this down. But Charles gets a big old grin on his face and he starts like moseying his way on over there. Okay. 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 Uh, Elvinia? Oh, I said what I was doing. Oh, I'm... My apologies. Uh, yep. That's okay. Um... The four of you uh, beginning to uh, either watch or get closer. The trail um, somewhat tailing this 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 individual, um, this princess, uh, if you will. And um, before Katie character follows princess. <laughs> hmm. uh, before you all can do anything, you all see four individuals take the stage. Um, you see one individual, you know when you have notes, um, you see one individual who is tall, very dark skinned. Um, he is also bald, but he has two golden stripes. I'm sorry, two silver stripes going down to the back of his head. Um, he's wearing very, very elegant robes, almost akin to a wizard. Uh, and they are made of, of of a nice, I mean, a very nice material. Um, but what's important is you see mostly reds and blacks um um in this in in the uh in the robe itself um very specific colors uh the trail you would know this to be uh, and and arella uh you would know this to be darius my apologies darius the archmage of the major circle um he's also the headmaster of mortana which is the uh wizarding school that is in elven uh in elvenport and ingleport i'm gonna always call it elvenport now um, you see another individual take the stage, and I'm sorry, Darius stands in front of the red banner. Um, you see another individual take the stage. They are kind of on the shorter side, around four and a half feet. Um, a uh, undercut with hair going to the side, uh, like a light auburn uh, shade. They're wearing um, armor uh, that is uh, bronzy in nature with a big shield and a hammer. Uh, in their hand. Uh, and this is Brendan, Latrell and Arella. You would know this to be Brendan, a cleric of Miranda, um, of Moradin, and the leader of the foundry, which are the people, the working class, um, all of the merchants and the forge masters. They then pronounce they are not Brandary. Um, um, and they stand under the green banner. You see another individual walk up, a, a woman with long black hair wearing a very um, form-fitting dress um, that is black with tinges of blue um, and gray uh, kind of running through, um, almost like a mermaid dress at the end. A little bit, uh, more so in color than in actual fit. Uh, uh, and they are, have a, a teal skin. Um, and if anyone has a passive perception... Uh, if you look to the left of your sheet, um, underneath your saving throws, you will see senses, and the top thing says passive whiz perception. If you have a passive perception of, of 13 or higher, you will notice that there's a little bit of like sweat coming on her face. Uh, Which one was that? Sorry, the top one? Uh, yes, it says passive whiz perception. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. That number, you will see. Oh, I can click on it. Okay, it was just small. I couldn't see it. <laughs> no worries. Uh, <laughs> These contacts, I'm like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, and you see, gets a little bit of sweat dip on her face, and so she simply takes uh, a handkerchief and just dot, blots. But you notice that it's not really that warm outside. I mean, the sun's shining, but it's very windy. Uh, well, a gentle wind. So, who knows? Um, Latrell and Arella again. You mm, Latrell, not Arella. My apologies. Uh, you know this to be Viara. Uh, she's the leader of the Sanguine, um, which is an, almost like a, a community protection squad, not police. We're not going to say the four letters, but you know how I feel. Um, 
um, not police, but they are very much a group who keeps the the the, the streets safe. Uh, they keep the the world uh, safe. Um, they also take up uh, arms as the guard of Ingleport. Um, Latrell, can you also? Hmm. Can you just roll me a d20? Just roll me a d20. Got you. Five. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Um, nothing else from that. Um, last but certainly not like least, you see an individual take the stage, and mm-hmm. he is a very, very, for lack of a better word, gorgeous um, individual. Uh, he has caramel brown skin. Uh, he seems humanoid um, in nature. Um, he's wearing a white and gold suit, like a three-piece suit, um, and with a half cape going off his side. Um, that's also white, gently uh, blowing in the wind. Uh, rings are on most of half of his fingers, at least. Um, his eyes have no irises. They are completely white. Um, he eyes the crowd, and he stands in front of the golden um, banner. And so as Viara stood in front of the blue banner. My apologies. Um and he stands there and the four of them kind of just survey the crowd for a moment before he steps forward to a podium that's standing in the front. And he says, I, Quentin Von Zaros of the Von Zaros family, welcome each and every one of you to our home today. Some have traveled far and wide to stand here at this moment among family, friends, and partners as we celebrate the 100th year of the festival of Ouroboros. I know that my grandfather, may he rest in peace, is watching down on us below. Can Arella and Latrell make, mm, actually all four of you, can you all make me history checks? With the same one, right? You take, yep, D20, you always roll a D20 unless I ask otherwise. And okay. you take, you see the history on your page, you add the number that's next to history. Uh, 12. Okay. Uh, Wait, where is my history? 19. 19. Two. Two. I formally want to put in a complaint about 14. these digital dice. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, is that what we're supposed to be using? I was, no, you, uh, don't, no, you don't have to. You don't have uh, to. Okay. You can if you want to. You don't have to, though. <laughs> uh, uh, Latrell, what was that again? Sorry. It's a 14 plus two. So it's 16. Cool. Yep. Okay. Um, Latrell, you know, because mostly you live here. I mean, all of you, even you, uh, Elvinia, with your two, you know of a great, um, um, instance that happened in Ingleport. Um, you don't know details, but you know there was a big fight that happened years ago. Um, Latrell, you know specifically because you have, uh, lived here, uh, and Arella because you are royalty. Um, <laughs> You know that there was a a moment that is called, ma'am, uh, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm struggling. Sorry. Uh, you know a moment that is called. Um, it, it's just a moment in time that they don't want to give a name, but they call it the moment. Uh, I'm calling it the moment. Let me live. Um, and uh, what happened was there was a big ancient black dragon that came to Engelport and four individuals um, stopped it. Um, one of those specific individuals was Marcus Zanvaros, uh, Von Zaros, sorry, who was engulfed by this dragon. And for a moment, they thought all was lost until a bright light erupted from the dragon, literally exploding it from the inside. And they were dead. But Marcus was nowhere to be found afterwards. Um, It is a sacrifice that the citizens of Ingleport all take to their hearts. And that is actually what the Festival of Ouroboros is about. Because once he died, around a week later, he was seen walking to the the edge of Ingleport, um, alive somehow. Um, And he lived a life until he passed away of old age. But this is about death, birth, and rebirth. Um... Um, and Quentin continues but today is not just a day of remembrance it is a day of celebration jubilation and happiness 
we, the city of Ingleport, have endured so much, and yet we still persevere. I know my purpose among this council, but I must thank each and every one of you and each and every one of my contemporaries who stand with me on this day. Long ago, our predecessors put aside their differences for one reason, you, all of you. Ingleport's past, present, and also bright future. We stand here for you, and together, we would like to kick off this festival by doing what we do every single year. We'll be selecting some of you to be the marshals of Ouroboros. It is an honor to represent what each, what Ingleport means to each of us, and we want to show our appreciation for you. At that moment, you see every single last individual, the three, Darius, Viara, and Brendan, all step forward. Um, Brendan handing a simple uh, wand to, um, to uh, Quentin, my apologies. Um, the others having wands themselves already. They all point these wands to the sky. And they speak in very hushed tones. Um, almost inaudible at this point. And the sky begins to darken just a little bit as clouds begin to move in one by one, kind of dampening the light that was, um, that was seen. One by one, different pillars of light begin to come down upon four individuals. And at that exact moment, each of you, your ring finger on your right hand begins to burn ever so slightly. Not enough to hurt, but enough to be noticed. And you see that Ouroboros symbol kind of swirl around just once before it disappears. The crowds all look to see who the light has shone on this year, and they all look at the four of you. What do you do? I uh, pull I... the hood over my head and I slink back as far as I can into the shadows because I do not wish to be perceived. I just got <laughs> here. What is happening? Oh my God. And I just kind of like start to slowly back out. If we're talking about like the next six seconds, that's what I'm doing. No, no <laughs> Um, I look up from my ring finger at Brendan in complete fear. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say. Valid. The trail of Vinia. Uh, I... Oh, go ahead. You can go, you can go, you can go. I frown as I, as I feel that burn in my ring finger. And I actually just kind of shield my eyes at the bright light and tip my head a bit and just go, not what I came here for. Absolutely not what I wanted today. And I just keep staring at the ground and hope that no one, the hope that this light will stop soon. The light definitely has faded just for a moment. <clears throat> it was more like a beacon to signify who it was. And now yeah. um, the light has gone away, but people are just staring now. Oh, the, great. The trail? The trail is looking up to the sky with like a big old grin on his face. He was just trying to move through the crowds ever so like stealthily and suddenly, and he's just like, "Thanks for blowing my cover." <laughs> and you hear Quentin, his voice ringing out. Oh, uh, and I will say, Arella for sure will know that this is thaumaturgy as his voice rings out, and he says, "Will the four of you please come up to the stage? Do not worry, this is merely something fun." This is not much responsibility. This is just a gift. Um, and he does look down at Urella and he nods knowing that you are royalty. Very surprised actually though. There's a, there's a look of, hmm. Do I look behind me and see if there's like a way out? Give me a perception check. Oh God, okay. Don't fail me. What did I get? A 22. Boom. Great. See, perception mm. allows you to see. Perception doesn't allow you to move. And yeah, as you yeah, turn around, <laughs> you don't see necessarily a, a, a way out. 
what you hear is, Oh my god, you got picked! Oh, that's so cool! You might want to go up there! I look down at this kobold. He's below me, right? Mm -hmm. I bend down and I grab him by his neck. <laughs> I say, you will be quiet okay. today. Today, you will be quiet. And I start to just get angrier okay, and angrier. Okay, okay. Like, Give me my five gold back, you little cretin. You have it. You have it. it. I'm just, all of my frustration and anger is just pouring to this little kobold. <laughs> and I'm just like, ah! And, and, and you see. I, I walk up because I'm like, now that has attracted all the attention. <laughs> I walk <laughs> up and I'm like, and I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? He took my five gold and now I'm a marshal or something. I don't know what to do. Can I, I, can I, I just don't be here? <laughs> can I take the kobold and just shake him? Like, like pick him up by the ankle and just shake him? Yes. Oh, I'll let you do it. With you. Oh my gosh. Um, for, I mean, I'm bigger. I'm twice the kobold size. You are correct, but just for, just for giggles, you're going to do it. I want to see how well you do it. Okay. Can you roll me an athletic <laughs> check, please? Oh my god! I or or, was... or make an attack roll. Either one's fine. No, I'm gonna do athletics. Thankfully, I've got a good score in athletics. One good bonus. <laughs> Please, you all pray for me. I'm using my actual die right now. <laughs> I'm not abusing the kobold. I'm getting revenge. He stole her gold. <laughs> Thank you. Technically, did. Uh, that is not a that oh god, good. I can't math because I have a three. I never get to use athletics. That is a twelve. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You get that, I will let me put down, no! That is a tink, 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 all the stuff falls. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the gold has fallen. Um, Another owlbear brunt has fallen. One of his oh, teeth has fallen uh, out. Um, oh, no! It was, it was fake, Um, and he and it's oh. gone. Uh, Yeah, And but more importantly, as you're shaking this individual, the four of you get here. Mm -hmm. As yes. Quentin is still standing on the stage, <laughs> watching, waiting for four individuals to join them. Oh, give give us a minute. I scoop up any gold that Liliana doesn't take. Uh, yeah, five. That's all. I Liliana think. gets five back. You get six. Yay! So I look at you. Uh, you get six in an IOU card, actually. Lit. <laughs> I have a Elvania. question. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, while this is all going on, and like the entire crowd is looking at this spectacle now, right? Yeah. Ish. Mm. About 70% right, of the crowd is looking for sure. All right. And about how close am I to Arella? Mm. How close would you have wanted to get? Okay, we're, go we're going to play this fairly. Mm. Arella, you don't know this individual. Would you have... And you knew that people were were kind of, you know moving to make sure you get to the front and now all eyes are on you would you notice anyone out of the blue coming towards you or would you see a lot of people coming because a lot of people would definitely try to swarm you seeing that you are a chosen individual swarm you but like keep distance but still swarm you does it, would it seem odd that I someone would notice, i don't i don't think i'd be too aware of my surroundings because okay. of the shock of being pretty much chosen but also Loki being caught for abandoning royal duties okay. and being someplace where I shouldn't be. Because remember, I, I snuck out. <laughs> okay. Uh, then, Latreo, how close do you want to be? Uh, close enough to roll for sleight of hand. Do that. Uh, and Arella, can you roll me a perception check? I got an 11. Okay. A 7. Plus anything on your uh, sheet? Plus, uh, what's your perception modifier? Plus three. Mine's just plus... Oh, hers is plus three. Sorry. And my sleight of hand is plus two. Where do you see that? Oh, um, I see it. Seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Arella, you're kind of just um, into yourself for a moment, thinking about the fact that you got caught. What is something that... Because you're wearing a dress, correct? Yes. Would you have, like... A bag on you? Would you have anything else, um, or would it just be like jewels on your hand, or jewels on your neck, or anything like that? I have jewels on my hand. Okay. Not, not obviously not the 
chosen one ring, but I would have maybe like a bracelet. Oh, and that's not even a ring. That's that's almost like a tattoo. It's like a phantom tattoo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not uh, like a bracelet. Well, okay. I have two, so. Cool, you have one. Uh, <laughs> Latrell, you have a, 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 a silvery, like a platinum silvery, um, kind of bulky uh, bracelet now with you. All right. Perfect. And no one saw me do this, right? So I just... If you look at the stage, you will notice Viara staring at you. I just shoot her. I just shoot her the biggest grin and just go... Because I'm not... She. I think would Viara, me and Viara would know each other, right? She you knows guess. my reputation as just kind of like... I don't steal necessarily for the money, but for the sport. You've noticed that she has not said anything. She just smiled. Um, <laughs> and Quentin says, <clears throat> if the uh, festivities, um, well, the extracurricular festivities are over, um, I would love the four of you to join me on stage. I, I just, I just, you see me just go, and I start to just walk over because I just feel like defeated. <laughs> Do the four? Uh, do the rest of you go as well, or? Yeah, yeah, I go. I just stay shocked where I am. I walk up with the biggest grin on my face, and I'm kind of like, like with my hand to my side, kind of like fidgeting with the bracelet a little bit, wondering if I do get extra arrogant now, and I just start spinning it on my finger as I walk up. Okay. But I decide not to do that. I decide not to. Do that. <laughs> but okay. I decide not to. Arella, you're gonna hear a whisper in your in your in your ear. Uh, but no, but it's not someone actually speaking to you physically. Uh, and if your eyes were to look up, you would see the bald individual with the two silver lines staring at you. And they say, Princess, do not fear. No one knows you're here. This is simply a formality. I take a deep breath and take a very slow pace walk to the stage. Still hesitant, but I get there eventually. Valid. And as the four of you get to the stage, you all stand almost in front of the four others directly, the quartet, as Latrell and Arella would actually know them as to be, um, the four leaders of um, uh, uh, Ingleport. Um, you would also know Quentin is the de facto face of the leaders as well, as he is the leading family uh, from the leading family of Ingleport. Still, obviously, re uh, responding to the throne and all that, but this is their own city. Um, and they say, each of you have been chosen to be the marshal, mm, the marshal of Ouroboros. This is a time of acceptance. This is a time of joy. Do not fear. We are not placing a heavy burden upon you. We're not telling you to change your lives and now serve our land. This is simply a symbolic notion to represent that the final member of this council is the people themselves. We give every year for individuals these wands to represent that. You will dance, you will be merry, you will go about your day. Later on, you will use these wands to light the candles that you will see. For that is symbolic of the light that was given and the very light that stopped the moment. Will you take these wands? 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 The four say in tandem. Um, I just got here and I just don't think I'm the best representative for Ingleport. I, 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 you know, I'm really just, I just like to keep to myself. A city is as strong as every resident and stranger that walks into it. You are in these lands, therefore you are of Ingleport. I'm a princess and I'm already in service to the people, so... Why do I need a wand? I have the title. You have and the, the nobility. You have the title. You hear Darius speak up. Darius, the one who spoke to you in your, in, in, your, in your mind. You have the title. You have the nobility. 
You have the status, but do you have the heart? This will show you do. Begrudgingly take the wand, roll my eyes. Fine. I meekly just put my paws out. I'm just like, and uh, when they put it in my hands, I'm like, <laughs> Quentin gives you a wand specifically. Darius gives you a wand, uh, Arella. Uh, Latrell and Avenia, do you take wands? I do. Yes. Latrell I'm, looks, yeah. I don't Latrell know. looks up back to the disguise, like kind of like notioning towards the divine one. Is this, are you sure? Okay. And he takes it just laughing, just arrogantly. Viara hands you your wand specifically. And Brendan walks to you, oh, Evinia, and says, I like your horns. Those are cool. Oh, and, thanks. And Grew them myself. I wish I could grow horns. Can't do that one. Mm, it's okay. And they hand you a wand as well. And all four of you begin to feel a, a, a buzz in your hand as these wands are naturally attuning to you in this moment. Write this down, please. Um, oh boy. Latrell, you can now cast Mage Hand at will through the wand. And you can also cast, and I'm going to say this, people in chat, this is specific for this campaign. You can cast Invisibility once as a bonus action per long rest. Arella, you can cast Light at will. You can cast Hex once as a bonus action per long rest. Elvinia, you can cast Control Flame at will. Oh yeah. You can cast Shield as a reaction once per long rest. Liliana, you can cast Guidance at will. And you can cast Hideous Laughter as a bonus action once per long rest. I love. And as you all attune to these wands, Quentin speaks up, his thaumaturgy ringing out to the crowd. The four have been chosen. And now we can officially begin the... As you are here, as a band of dire elves, dire elves, dire wolves runs into the crowd. And that's where we're going to take a break. Uh oh. I thought we had some in the Baja, man. Something always happens. <laughs> I need, dire 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 <laughs> dire I need to say dire elves. I need to say dire elves fan art, like right Look, now. It is because I keep looking at Elvinia as a name, so I've said Elvenport and now dire elves. <laughs> are, are we still on? We're not still yet, alive. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, we uh, what's our what's there? We're gonna take about a five seven minute break. You all st uh, stick around. We'll be back. Make sure you all stretch, hydrate, bio, do what you need to do. There is still a goal on the screen. We're trying to get, you know, some subs into I Need Diverse Games, and in turn, it helps us as well. Um, there's also a command in chat if you want to support uh, the cast. Um, there's no specifically because FYPM, and if you know my channel, you know what that stands for. Uh, again, we'll be right back. Sit back and... Uh, that's that. Goodbye. <laughs>
definition you got. I am the tiger, I'm making steps to the top. The flames are ripping up, you just gotta hand me the rock. Take a seat, you cannot stand it. All I know the flow harder than a scotch bunny. Don't try study me, you cannot manage. This ain't what you want, bitch, I'm a fucking phenomenon.
And we are back. Hopefully you all stood up and stretched and did what you needed to do. Wash your hands. Uh, thank you all again so much for being here for the first episode of Dungeons and Durags, an all-black D&D campaign. DM'd by yours truly, Critical Bard, with an amazing cast of awesome uh, uh, black creatives doing the damn thing as they do. Uh, before we go back in, a uh, quick word from uh, Cypher Tier. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for the tips and donations while we were uh, live. A special thank you to P. Stebbins for your very generous uh, contribution to the show. Everyone has been parsed out a little bit of what you sent, so thank you very much. And again, if you would like to use support the stream, you can either subscribe to INDG, which will then go back out to the cast, and also to our other show that we do on Sunday nights, or you can just tip the cast directly by doing exclamation uh, tip do rag cast and everyone's coffee PayPal link will come up. It is on a timer as well. They are not uh, required, but they are always appreciated. And with that being said, there are three. <laughs> oh, you hear screaming, you hear panic as there begins to be, uh, be heard just lots of terror and, and fear as folks don't actually know what to do with themselves right now. Um, but the four standing before you look out and then look at you. We call this sanity. Didn't expect that to happen, but if you want to help, be the marshals. And the crowd almost parts as these uh, wolves begin to walk into the middle of the uh, the, the, the area. Um, you are on a stage right now. There's about, the area itself where people con uh, uh, congregate is about 40 feet by 40 feet. Theater of the mind, I don't have maps. Potentially if we do a season two, we'll have maps. That's what you do when, if, if, if we get more money. Um, but for now, theater of the mind is about 40 by 40 foot. Um, the the uh, wolves are all in the middle, kind of like barking and growling at the people around them looking for food, looking for something, obviously agitated. And the four who are standing on the stage have taken a step back. <clears throat> roll a initiative. step back? Oh, all right. Um, to roll initiative, if you go on your uh, character sheet, I want to say something really quickly. Uh, again, as this is also a game where people are learning how to play Dungeons & Dragons, I'm going to be explaining some of the things about Dungeons & Dragons, both mechanically and flavor-wise, to help them understand the game a little better. So this is our first fight of Dungeons & Durags. 
Uh, if you go on your character sheet, Ooh. almost in the middle of your character sheet, you see initiative with the number in it. Roll your d20, add that number. In a second, I'm going to go around and ask what those numbers are. <clears throat> oh, boy. I'm whipping out the stainless steel d20 for this one. Let's do it. Uh, Latrell, what number did you get? I'm doing it right now. I, I feel like this is important. Hold on. Not 20, though. 16. 16 plus anything? Plus two. Plus two. 18. Uh, Elvin, nat 20 plus anything? Nat 20 plus four, so 24. Mm. 24. Arella. 16 plus two. 18. Interesting. Liliana. Eight. <laughs> yeah. We love it. Holding it Woo! back. Holding it I'm back. I'm really cautious. I want to just <laughs> back it up. Okay. That is valid. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to auto roll their initiative. Ooh. Okay. Good to know. Round one. So you see, again, the three um, the three dire wolves are all kind of looking around, and then they all kind of look your way, the four of you, and just begin to just... <sighs> And you hear uh, someone behind you, it's probably Viera, could be Darius, they kind of have the same timbre. Um, and they say, they look hungry. What a shame. Um, Elvinia, it is your turn. What do you do? Um, I am going to attack the dire wolf closest to me. All right, so they are about 20 feet away from you. I'm not Wait, can I recant that? You can do anything. Yeah, you haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm not that type of DM. No, you said it. <laughs> I'm going to try animal friendship. So when you told me earlier that you had animal friendship, I literally <laughs> went, interesting. Can you please tell the, the community what animal friendship is? I'll be learning to because I've never used it. This spell lets you convince a beast that you mean it no harm. Choose a beast that you can see within range. It must see. It must see and hear you. If the beast's intelligence is four or higher, the spell fails. Otherwise, the beast must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be charmed for, by you for the spell's duration. If you or one of your companion harms the target, the spell ends. If I use this at level two or higher, I can affect one additional beast. Okay. So you know I'm going to try it at level two, right? Of course you are. Of course you are. I'm fine with that. And lucky for you, Dire Wolves has an intelligence of three, not four. So okay. I need you to make, uh, no, I need to make a wisdom saving throw, I believe. Correct. For two you of them. You need to make a, yep. And they'll be charmed by you. What is your spell casting DC? Oh God, what is it? Because I am so and not used to, ex to that. To explain this, Arella and anyone who has, uh, uh, obviously, Avinia, if you click on spells in D&D Beyond, yeah, I'm you, there. Will, you will see um, a number that says what your uh, spellcasting model is. Oh, uh, your my DT. modifier. Sorry, your DC. My, modif my DC is, um, for this, it's an 11. Okay. Look, I'm not expecting them to get any of that. Uh, no, that is, ooh, oof. Okay, they have a plus one to wisdom, but that's a 10 and a seven. Oh, then they are charmed. We have two wolfy friends. So what you see mm -hmm. is, uh, so how does the spell look when you uh, cast it? Um, I actually whip out my flute and and play a few notes. And as I do, I kind of walk back so they, they have to come to me. Mm. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a sound that would be friendly to animals. Okay. And I just kind of pull them toward me, and when they when they are charmed, uh -huh. I just I just kind of stand there and and pet them on the head and give them pets. And I'm like, you're gonna hang out here with me. All right, so that's actually perfect because one of them had that turn right after you, and I'm gonna say <laughs> that one is charmed. Uh, that one and the one that goes last are, are charmed. But I'll use use that movement right now. I don't have any problem with that. So as you whip out your your flute and you begin to play, you see there's like three. It's almost like the three hyenas from Lion King. Um, mm. But you see the one in the middle is still growling, and you see the other one just. And I give them pets. And they walk up and kind of. Yeah, I just, I just kneel down like. I got two of your dogs. What you doing? Yeah, you see them just. <laughs> um. So, animal friendship um just charms them. 
you can kind of influence. You can't really give a command, but you can just see how they're feeling. So how do you want this one to kind of be in this moment? Um, I want them both to feel safe with me so they'll be convinced to kind of hang out with me and not confused because it seems like from their yips, they seem really confused of foe, wait, friend. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm just giving them scritches like, oh, good boy, good boy, hang out with me. You're a good boy. Perfect. And yeah, they're kind of just <laughs> and they don't use anything. They use their movement to get to you and they stay there doing nothing as you have charmed them. Therefore, Arella, it is your turn. You see two uh, 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 dogs that are now charmed by Elvinia, two wolves, elves, two uh, wolves that are uh, charmed by Elvinia. You see one still in the middle staring, just <sighs> almost getting angry that the two of its best friends are now gone. I scream at Darius to protect me because I'm royalty. Can you make me an intimidation check? Oh, I can't just, okay. Can't just be loud. Oh, you can no. be loud, Demand but roll things. a dice with it too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to go now. Okay. Two. You got a two on the die? Yeah. I don't need to know what your modifier is. Um, He looks at you a and goes. Intimidation? Mm -hmm. No, it's a zero. I, 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 I figured it's not big. So you got a two on the die, which is only one above a natural one, which is the worst roll you can get. Uh, and, I hate it here. <laughs> and Darius looks and says, Your Highness, by you showing the the people of your power and your strength, you will only ensure the continue of your line. Please, by all means. Arilla hesitantly <laughs> tries. <laughs> To cast a spell. <laughs> okay. To attack. What spell? The, the would you... dire wolf. That's definitely not a dire elf. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what would you? What spell would you like to use? Do you have on your sheet? I have sacred flame. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, and how do you think this sacred flame begins to form? Like, what is a sacred flame to Arella, and how does it affect the creature? Um, with Arella, she has to gather and really concentrate mm -hmm. to have the power focused between her hands and then ultimately shoot it out toward the target. Okay. In like a barrage of just fire. Okay. But the fire has a lot of white, a lot of hints of white and kind of silver to it as well. Mm -hmm. It's less of an actual flame. It's more of a brightness that is so powerful. It almost right. seems like flame. Right. Um, cool. So with Sacred Flame, I believe I need to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, or they will take some damage. And I'm assuming you're doing the one that's in the middle of the field, not one of the two that Ovinia has. Yes, in the middle. I'm just that's, confirming. That's you, can do, you can do what you want. <laughs> I just want to confirm. Uh, cool. So they have to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, they did not make that dexterity saving throw. Uh, so they will take... What does it say on your spell? How much damage? It is a 1d something damage. 1d8. Cool. So Radiant. you're going to roll a d8, which is like the diamond shaped one. And then give me that number. Confirming. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I Sorry. I thought you were saying like <laughs> confirmed. I was like. <laughs> thinking... I think I'm being punked. It says one. Then they take one point of radiant damage. Maybe we should have called the Baja Men. <laughs> Can we cut to Latrell with the biggest grin on the side? Oh, for sure. For After sure. The wolf's like, yeah. No one asked you. <laughs> um, oh. So as this flame kind of like gives them like a love tap on their nose and gets um, as this this radiant energy attempts to hurt them, it's like a little like a little flick on their nose. Um, do you do anything else with your turn, or are you done? You have, yeah, you've your action. If you have a bonus action, you can do something that has a bonus action. You now have a spell that's technically a bonus action if you want to use that. Um, otherwise, uh, you can kind of chill. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna end my turn, but Arella like 
looks at, like at her hands mm -hmm. shakingly as she's just not surprised but disappointed understood understood latrell it is your turn uh after watching all of this and just like taking in what just happened uh he says he just kind of like clicks his neck to the side and says okay it's my turn uh am i close enough to one of the enraged wolves to so there's one enraged wolf two that are more uh, docile next to avinia you can yeah. be you can be close to him you have enough movement all right i want to use assassinate who you are an assassin rogue please inform the 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 masses what this means I just had it right in front of me and then I clicked the button and I don't even know what button I clicked and now I just don't see it. No worries. Um, <laughs> so it says uh, you get your Adelius and when you get the drop on enemies, you have advantage on your attack roll against any creature that hasn't taken the turn in combat yet, which this one has not. In addition, any score you hit against this creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Do you want to attempt to hide before you pop out and get it? Get it, or do you want to go straight to it? It will not be a critical unless you roll a natural twenty um, automatically. Unless you uh, get away from it first. All uh, right. I guess I'll try to maneuver around out of its vision. Okay. And I roll for what? Stealth, right? Yep. Roll a stealth check. I don't. Got a five. Plus four, but I don't think I do. Right. You actually do, um, oh, as I rolled a perception check for the thing, which has a plus three and only got a five as I rolled a two on the die. Mm. Um, so you get around and you kind of kind of just weave through and you can see, well, you can't see right now because you're in the middle of your moment, but VR is just watching you. Uh, and you kind of get around to the side while this thing is so intently focused on the person who decided to hit his snout with this horrible, minuscule form of power that did nothing. Um, he's staring at this morsel, princess or not. So you can kind of get around. Uh, make me an attack roll at advantage. That's just the regular d20, right? Uh, yes, regular d20 rolled twice. Okay. 18? Um, you roll it again, just to be safe. 17. Cool, yeah. 18 plus whatever your attack modifier is, you're going to hit. Mm, that's the strength, right? Uh, what are you using? A nope. uh, dagger, a dagger, rapier? Dagger, that that's a dexterity. That's plus two then. All right. So that's a 20. But you hit, and since it was surprised, it's a critical hit. Which means the uh, the dice you roll for your damage, which I believe is a D4. How I'm going to do criticals on this channel is you're not going to roll the dice twice. You're going to take max damage from that die and then roll it. So you'll always get at least max on one of the die. I'm going to be real with you. I don't know which one of these is the D4. Is it looks the like one a looks diamond. Like a triangle? Yeah, yeah, like the triangles. Yeah. This one? Yep. Okay. So you'll get a four plus roll that die. I don't know how to read this. What is it? What's, <laughs> the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the number at the top? What's the number at the top? Uh, let me wait. Let me pull the side of the. That's a three. So that's seven. Plus, what's your dexterity modifier? Plus two. I mean, plus, plus two. Plus, plus two? two. So that's yeah. nine. Keep that number for me. Mm -hmm. You have sneak attack as a uh, rogue, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. How many uh, sneak attack die do you get? It says two. You get two. Yep. So you have nine at twelve. Then roll two d six. Which are the two square, the cube uh, I, I, numbers. I, yeah, I got the D's. I just yep. didn't know what the, I didn't know. I was, you know what? I, above game, thank you for pointing this out to me. Cause since I got these, I was looking at this and I'm just like, I don't know what this is or when <laughs> it's ever going to come into play. I don't understand the number configuration or nothing, but here we go. One. Okay, so that's 22. One more time. One. It's okay. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> You did 23 points of damage to this dire wolf with one stab. Please tell me how it looks. How do you describe just stabbing this creature? All right, so how I stab this creature is basically by sneaking up on it, it doesn't see me. So I'm able to kind of like get on top of the wolf 
and just like go with the dagger, like kind of like into its neck. And I put my hand over its mouth to stop the screaming. So I, because I'm thinking about the other wolves that were, um, that uh, Alvinia had um, entranced. And I just like, it was just kind of like a shh. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. So, and as you stab this, uh, this creature, you hear, yep. Um, as it, you know, I'm not going to get too graphic, but you see a certain red liquid begin to form um, as this creature is, is struggling to stay on his feet, but still looks very, very angry. Is that the end of your turn? I probably should let go of his mouth, but yeah. You probably yeah. shouldn't because it's its turn and it's going to attempt oh. to bite you. Oh. <laughs> um, luckily, it doesn't have his friends around and luckily they've been charmed. Because it doesn't get pack tactics, which means it would have got advantage on his attack against you. Uh, So it's going to roll to attempt to bite you on the leg. Actually, a bite the arm that is now uh, done uh, grabbing his mouth. And that mess up my silk robe, man. Mm, It probably won't mess up your silk robe. Did the 10 hit you? Uh, My armor class is... 13. Then no, it, it like bites your arm, but it hits the uh, the clothing instead of actually finding purchase. And it gets let's go gets <sighs> very, very not happy right now. Um, that is its turn. The other dire wolf next to you, uh, Avenia, kind of does the same thing that the first one does, I assume. Just kind of protective. It feels good next to you. Um, feels warm and happy. Uh, unless you want it to have a certain feeling right now, that's going to be its turn. And we're gonna go to Iliana. I mean, I'm sorry, to Liliana. Oh, so Liliana uh, is freaking out. She doesn't really like to fight, but <laughs> she is immediately looking for somewhere to hide. But if there is not, is is there somewhere to hide? Mm, is, I'm it, sure. is it worth to? Is it is it worth to? I'm not gonna waste it. I mean, I've dealt with my. I've dealt with the pack of wolves before. It's happened. Uh, what I want to do is. Is I want to do and I want to do insightful fighting. Okay. And what does and that mean? Basically, I make an insight check against a creature that isn't incapacitated, and it's contested by its deception check. If that makes sense. It did make sense. What did you roll? I haven't rolled, okay. but I will. All right. Wow, I got a plus zero to insight. I hope. How are you gonna be insightful wow. fighting and not have no, a plus zero insight? You make it make sense. It was a bonus action. I wanted to try it out. Okay. I'm sure the five doesn't hit, but if that doesn't it work out, unfortunately, then, doesn't. Oh, I want to get if I can like. I'm 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 sure it's like focused on Latrell. Yeah, it's focused right now. I don't. I do know their names now, right? Since they said them. Did they say their names on the stage? Mm, no. No, I don't know their name. It's 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 preoccupied with the guy with the nice robes. I want to get behind it. If I can, I got 30 yeah. movement. Yeah, yeah, you can be behind it. I get behind it and I and go. I'm going to ask a question really quickly that the board can answer freely. Do you want flanking or no? The caveat is that I can also flank. I don't I don't mind flanking. I think it's fun. Flanking just basically means, I mean, Arella, I don't see you ever getting in the front, so it might not concern you, but it basically mm-hmm. means if there's like an enemy and then like they're fighting someone and then a friend of this enemy gets on the other side of them. Like in Call of Duty. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that. I, I like that. I think it's fun. It makes you think more in combat. Um, so if we can flank, that's what I wanted to I wanna do. I wanna try to hit it Fine. with yeah. both of my daggers. So you use a bonus action, so you technically only get one attack right now. Okay, one dagger. Yeah. And uh we'll see how that goes. So that oh you gosh. will you will get advantage because you're flanking. Lit. I'm gonna go ahead and roll that to hit in D and D beyond. Okay. Oh, it was, oh, yes! I got a 26 to hit. Was it a nat 20 or no? It was a nat 20. It was good. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. go ahead, give me that damage. Again, you're, 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 if you're using a dagger, I believe? Yes. Yep, so. 2d4 plus 4 piercing, and then I get a 2d6. So, well. you're gonna, so you're not gonna do 2d4, you're gonna do 1d4 plus 4. You're gonna add a 4 automatically. <sighs> Yeah. Okay. That was strange. On the sheet, it, it, it has one d four. Yeah. It's for gonna, one. Yeah, it's, okay, okay. It's gonna be. It's gonna, yeah. D and D Beyond Desert. It, different um uh, um crit rules is weird. So yeah, you're gonna do one d four plus your de- your dex. Add a d. Add a four from your max damage from critting, and then add twelve from sneak attack plus the two d six. Got it. 
I love numbers. I love numbers too. And I'm the DM, so I'm gonna need you to remember that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so I did my I did my six and then I did my four, so that's ten, and then I add the twelve and that's twenty two, and then I do the two D six. Yes. Is that right? Yes. All right. You know, I forgot all those numbers right away. All right, so here we go. Three. Okay, hold on. There we go. Five. And then I'm gonna pull this up. Y'all, this is this is the highest math I'll ever do on this channel, and then I'll have it all down packed. <laughs> so six plus four plus twelve plus five. Twenty-seven damage. So you really didn't need to do all that. I just wanted to make you count. Uh Liliana. But, you know, I love doing it. You know, we love math over here. Liliana. <laughs> yes. How do you end this symphony as you kill this direwolf? So in my head, I'm like, okay, if I just if I just deal with this wolf, maybe I can just I can tell them that this is a mistake and, and they'll be impressed. So let me just get behind it and I kind of creep behind and I just go like right in its head as I bring my dagger down and you can just see Latrell, you see me pop up because you didn't see me sneak over. You see me pop up behind this wolf. And my face is just panic and anger and fear all mixed into one. And I just mm, right into its head. And of course, its eyes loll to both sides and its tongue lolls out of its mouth and it goes limp. And Latrell's and just looking at this with the wildest smile. <laughs> and you see the crowd is like cheering for the, the, the saviors as you all deal with these wolves. Um, you can see the, the folks on the stage are just watching. It's not that they're not impressed. They're just watching. Um, and that's the end of this one wolf. I'm going to take us out of initiative for a second. Because... Still an initiative? I'm going to take us out for a second. Because, Elvinia, what would you like to do with the two wolves that you have? Yes. Um, if possible... I would love it if I could kind of encourage one to run away mm -hmm. and then keep the other as a companion. Okay. 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 Holy shit. First episode. Um, <laughs> Lady so, Luck would be proud of me. So, yes. So, what I want you to do. So, one, yeah, one easily gets the, it sees its dead friend, but it also sees you as a friend. And right now, since you're the alive friend versus the dead friend, it's going to trust a live friend. So if a live friend tells it to leave, it leaves. It's gone. Bye. Um, and you kind of see uh, Krunk, the kobold, as they have been aptly named now. Krunk goes, oh, daddy! Um, and they ran after it. Um, oh, good. Uh, secondly, <laughs> though... Since it is still charmed, you're going to make an animal handling check at disadvantage. I mean, sorry, at oh. advantage. At advantage. I don't think why it's at disadvantage. Like, I'm trying to set you up for failure. Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> or not sir. Forgive me. No, no, sir is fine. He, uh, it's all okay. good. Um, but uh, so, yeah, make an animal uh. handling check at advantage. And how nice am I today? Because I kind of want this, but it's still going to be up to the dice. Um, All right, the the stainless steel die has been good to me. Let us. You said an advantage, which I'm so glad for advantage because I would have been a crit fail. Ah, you're gonna add a nabbit. d4 Ooh. to your roll. Okay, I'm so glad because the first one would have been a crit fail. <laughs> the second one, the second <laughs> one is now a dirty twenty one. Uh, okay, is that plus a d4? Yep. Okay. Ooh. I was like, oh God, don't fall off. Don't fall off my desk. You would have also noticed um, the sound of like uh, metal hitting metal as a hammer hits a shield behind you as okay. Brendan casts guidance on you, noticing what oh. you're doing. Uh, oh. And uh, you see this, this puppy who I'm going to say the spell begins to fade for a moment and they kind of like fight against, but then they start to... And they're just looking up at you. Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> and they like get on their uh on their back, their bellies just explode, exposed. Um oh, I give them I give them scratches. I'm like, oh, what's your name? What's who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? 
So I'm allow you to take the time that you need to now. Uh, first of all, go to your page and add a <laughs> companion to your. Oh, how do I do that? Uh, if you go to extras, uh, okay. And you manage extras. Um, choose a com- choose a category. You're gonna do a uh, beast companion. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna make it easy, and then uh, do dire wolf. Um, Yay! Uh, you can name that whenever you need. But you know that the the animals being named Fenris, right? Of, of course it is. Of course it is. I should I should have known this, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, uh, regardless of this moment, um, you see, uh, the crowd just begin to cheer. There's laughter. There's clapping. Um, there's even a couple of kids going. Woo! You know, just really excited to see that um, these new marshals have kind of taken control and have done what has needed to be done. Uh, And you even see the four individuals standing behind you kind of giving nods of approval. Brendan's just like, yeah, yeah, I want to pet it. Can I eat? Can't eat it. Can't eat it. I'm going to just I'm going to be here. It's yours now. Uh, and you see Quentin kind of laughing and cheering, kind of waving to the crowd. Darius and uh, Vieira just kind of, hmm. you know, both kind of just just watching. Um, and after, <laughs> as this happens, uh, Quentin steps forward and says, using thaumaturgy once more, these are the marshals of the evening. Have fun, be merry, enjoy, for this is the festival of Ouroboros, and tonight... We will light the candles that will guide us into the next year. Be merry, have fun, and we'll see you all soon. And the crowds begin to just, you know, they're excited. They cheer for the last moment. Uh, The crowds begin to walk away. um, And Quentin comes to the four of you. And he says, well, then, that was quite a display. I know it was a bit overdramatic. I could have helped. We all could have done things, but we felt to truly honor the festival. Why not let the four new marshals do what they seemingly do best? And you have shown us exactly what you can do. Thank you. Next time, do your jobs and protect royalty. <laughs> Very mistake, noted, my princess. This is a mistake. I just, you can take your wand and I just, I don't know what to do with this. This is terrifying. (sighs) No, no, no. That is yours for the rest of the the evening, at least. Is this a one night thing? Is this just a one night thing? Once the beacon, once the lights are lit, the candles are lit, we will take the wands back. Yes. (sighs) Okay. Okay, Again, do not think of this as responsibility. This is just a way to show the people that well, even I, they can do what needs to be done. I, I just, I just, you know, I feel like we were pretty responsible for those dire wolves. So I, I don't know, but okay. As long as that doesn't happen again, I think I'm good. I have no reason to believe it would. Are you sure? As sure as I can be. Well, forgive me. We have some business to attend to. Thank you, princess. Thank you. And he nods to each and every one of you and says, I'll see you all tonight. Um, Again. You should bow to me. I kind of balk. I'm like, oh. Make an intimidation check at advantage. I'm I'm getting secondhand, like, intimidation embarrassment from this. I'm just like, wait. Hold on, but who... Who is Arella talking to? To the rest of us? N- no. No, 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 to no. Quentin. To Quentin. No, I'm oh. just embarrassed because they said that they nodded at me. Should bow to me because oh I'm God. royalty. You I don't nod at me. <laughs> I shrink back. <laughs> yeah, so Wait, yeah. What am I doing? So you're gonna roll <laughs> that that's d20 twice. Give me the higher number, and then add if you have any intimidation. I think you don't have any. I don't. Yep, yeah, I didn't think so. Mm. It's okay to keep you know just. Making it happen. Mm. So you said add them together? No, just giving the numbers separately. Uh, so the first one was two and the second one was 18. 18. We're going to take the 18. And you see Quentin kind of, <clears throat> and he just kind of takes a step back and he does a deep. 
as you should. I'm just like, oh. You know, I say it audibly, I'm like, oh. You very pointedly see Darius and Viara stare at you, but say nothing. Um, but uh, Quentin begins to head off, and Darius does step forward just for a moment. It's, if anything, it sidles next to everyone and says, Go on, you all can be the marshals. You can do it. No big deal. And he just kind of puts his hand behind his back and continues off. For the rest of this session, uh, because we won't get to the rest because of timing, um, you can enjoy the festival. There's a couple of games if you want to play some games, or you can go to a tavern, or you can do whatever makes sense to your characters. But I would like to know one by one what you all would do. Or if you all would be together, then we don't have to do one by one and we can just have some fun. Well, I'll go ahead and interject and say that uh, Liliana would definitely be like, I'm just out of curiosity now that she's kind of stuck in this. She'd be like, oh, well, uh, oh, what are your names? Uh, it's nice to meet you. I, I'm Liliana and uh, I'll be really quiet after this. I just, I just wanted to write down your stories. I want to troll the princess. Is that? Oh can God! I, can I do that? <laughs> you want to? No. You want to do what? I want to troll the princess. Can in in what way? What does trolling the princess mean in Dungeons and Dragons? I'm just gonna like just like friendly banter to get to know her better, but just kind of like in a mocking kind of way, you know. Then this is what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna force you to be an actor, but Arella the princess is right here. So what would you say there? Have a conversation. The entire interaction, I'm just gonna laugh, like just walk over to her laughing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's so oh, funny? Princess, princess, you have so much to learn. You're so busy worried about making yourself appear valuable that you aren't watching your valuables. And I twirl her bracelet in front of her. Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice at all. Wow. Permission to cast Hex. <laughs> I don't think you need permission. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm checking I'll, in with the I'll DM. ask this. <laughs> Latrell. I don't mean harm. I don't mean harm. <laughs> Latrell, it won't hurt you yet, but are you okay with uh, a cast member casting a spell on you? Yeah, yeah sure. I'm fine with it. <laughs> sure. Then there's yeah. no save for Hex. Oh. Well, it's funny, right? No, there's Got no save it. for Hex. Your oh, hex. there's no save? Oh. <laughs> Got, guys, wait. I just I wanted more to than know positive, There's no save for Hex. <laughs> You just get I hex. just wanted I just wanted to know your names, guys. We don't have to fight. We don't have to fight, guys. You don't know my name? I'm Princess Arella, Princess oh. of the Kingdom. Oh, I, I don't mean any offense. I I'm new here and, and everywhere and I just Well now you're educated and don't forget it. Oh well, thank you. Thank you so much, Prince Arella. I Princess Arella. I thank yes, you. yes. Mm -hmm. I just look at Arella and I'm like I'm, I'm you are not in the castle right now. I know that you're all royalty and think you're better than us, but you will not frighten this poor girl any longer. You can look down your nose the rest of us all you like, but you're not going to do it here. Or else Am I what? Really, princess? <gasps> really? I kind of just... <gasps> Brendan is still there and goes, Ah... Uh, I, um, marshals, um, I'm not going to tell you all what to do. I, just, I, I won't, I won't do that. I, I would never tell, especially, you know, princess, uh, and, and marshals, you'll have the wands now. Won't tell you what to do, but probably, you know, not fighting, um, in front of the crowds, especially, you know, princess, <clears throat> uh, when the crowds are watching royalty fight with commoners. It doesn't um, instill a sense of worthiness um, to be, you know, actually listened to. <clears throat> and you see them like hit their uh, their shield. Party, party! And they just start to walk away, <laughs> hoping to just boost the, the morale a little bit. I'm like, he's right, you know. I've seen they. it happen a lot. Of, they They're right, you know. They have seen this happen a lot of times in other towns. We should keep a happy face in front mm. of people to not drag I, attention. I don't care about these people. I don't have to be happy for them, but I am worried about you, Liliana, was it? Yes, 
Hi, I, I'm Liliana and I, uh, I'm from around. Um, I don't really talk to people often, but it's nice to meet you. Um, I actually, just to spite Arella, I give Liliana a very courtly bow. Oh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. I've never been honored in such a way. Uh, your name? Alvinia. Oh, I'm gonna write that down. Uh, L E L V E N E N I A? E L V E N I A. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been practicing. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. And this mm. is my newly acquired friend, my dire wolf. I'm sorry I stabbed your friend. I won't do that again. That's <sighs> okay. Oh. oh, I feel so much better. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, well, what are you all doing uh, tonight? Uh, I was going to go find a collar and some supplies for my new companion and then find the nearest tavern and scope oh. out the people, see if I could make my purse a little heavier. I like that. I would, would it be too much if I accompanied you? I've got an ear for things. Not Here at all. I. And I <gasps> I offer uh, Liliana my arm. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, are you two coming with us? Can I even respond under Hex? Am I just sitting You don't know. You're not. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you're basically just cursed for a second. Uh, oh. But you're not. You're not under harm, a whole person, anything like that. Um, that's just something Wait, that. When I, ooh, sorry. Go ahead. Like, go, go ahead. When you cast Hexo, am I allowed to snatch my bracelet back? No. Oh, I hate no. it here. <laughs> it basically makes them be worse at one thing they can do. Um, <laughs> That's good, though. Yeah. Good. Uh, but you could target that dexterity and then try to snatch it back. Yeah. I'm going to try. Okay. Then this is what's going to happen. Arella, can you make me... Actually, both of you make sleight of hand checks. No, no. I don't. I don't think I have any. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. What's going to happen is you're going to make a roll a d20, Arella. Add your dexterity mod. Your, your the number with your dexterity. Uh, okay. And add your proficiency number as well. It's going to basically be an attack roll. I just. Saw, okay. Nope. That's not it. So yeah, if you look at the top of your page, you see like the the, the uh, oh I'm at the top okay yeah, yeah. dexterity and the, the number from dexterity and the number from proficiency add those both together to the roll that you make which are which are d twenty okay Latrell you're gonna make a sleight of hand at disadvantage so what is that just gonna be just like a regular roll yeah make yeah no, make make a roll and then make two rolls and give me the lower number all right all right cool. so I'm Hold doing this twice. Down. Just so I'm hearing nope. you right. My apologies. Just once. You're going to do okay. it once. You're just adding more numbers to yours. He's rolling his twice and adding the lower number. Okay. Yep. 17. Or. God, I hate it here. 16. Okay. What's your uh, sleight of hand? Mine? Mm-hmm. Plus two. Okay. Uh, Rella, what did you roll? Four. Okay, uh, you definitely try to grab the bracelet, but even under this 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 turmoil that he's feeling right now, Latrell still kind of snatches the uh, the bracelet back, um, keeping it in his grasp. And I'll get you for this. And Arella storms off. Just you in know, a it only takes one word to get this back. Still walking away. That's with a P and ends with a lease. I I lean I lean over and I say it's not nice of you to steal things like that, even if you don't like people. But she's oh. rude. I oh. know she's rude, but we shouldn't give her any more ammunition. She'll get over it. And she's rich. She's royalty. <laughs> Maybe it's important to her. Well, then she shouldn't have let it get away from her. That's true. I agree. I. I kind of keep everything I need close. Yeah. But just be nice. Don't push her too hard. Why? What is she going to do? Stamp her foot at me? Isn't she a princess? I thought princesses had armies and stuff. I am a walking army. 
oh, well, I don't want to get on your bad side. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of. <laughs> I kinda, no, I like you. <laughs> You're fine. I like you. I think it's great. I'm kind of like, I giggle at it a little bit, but I kind of cover my mouth and I'm like, okay, okay, write it all this down. <laughs> oh, so are we, are we going to follow her or should we just go somewhere else? I'm getting, I'm getting Fenner some supplies and then I'm going to go find some food and drink if you two would like to come with me. Okay. She'll come back. I think she wants her necklace. And, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so the three of you begin to walk off towards the market area um, that's filled with different types of merchants, different leather workers, different metal workers, and all that. And Arello, where would you be walking towards? Say that last line you just said. To them or to you? That you said to them, yeah. Um, they, they're walking towards uh, the merchant area, different like leather workers and, and, and metal workers and different fabric uh, sellers. Just lots of things, different things you can buy at a shop that are all like different pop-up stands. So Arella came to the festival specifically for the merchants, but looking for like magical items, probably more so like more black market-ish, not necessarily like evil, mm -hmm. but looking for something in particular. Okay. And as you begin, so you already walked off a little ahead, a, a little a, a ahead of the through the trio. As yes. you all end up walking towards the same area, though Arello is walking towards more someone that has like a pop up tent. You can tell there's some uh, some arcane things. There's like a crystal ball uh, outside of the tent, and the other three are walking towards this area. We're gonna cut away for a moment. Back to the rainy area with the two beings sitting at a table. I don't ask for a third time. I'm going to ask once more. Do we have a deal? And you see they kind of lean forward the light of this now sapphire blue um, illuminating their face. Though, when you point a color towards something of the same color, it kind of cancels out. It doesn't really show anything else. And you notice, well, you all don't notice. You see the visage of the sweating woman standing on the stage, Viera. And the glowing orb moves towards the individual who cast it, and you see a similar chocolate bald man with silver stripes on his head. She takes out one simple blade, silver, and not to get graphic, but she decides to make an indent in her palm as blood begins to drip onto the table. This is the one thing we do together. Do I make myself clear? And he, as that ball begins to float down towards his blood, there's a an effect when two chemicals combined and all of a sudden the blood is gone, the light's gone. His eyes flash. Fine. Overhead the sound in the distance, a very distinct sound, a roar, a dragon. They both smile. It is done. It is done. And that's where we're going to end the first episode of Dungeons and Durex. Now, now, what? Now, oh. My fingers were on fire. I was typing all of that. <gasps> Thank you all for the Thank first, you. first episode of Dungeons and Durags. Uh, very, very excited for y'all to be here with us. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for this premiere episode. We're going to go back around, introduce ourselves, um, say who we are, where you can find all of us. Uh, you'll be able to find us again next week at 1230 Pacific uh, uh, time on this channel for episode two. We're going to go in reverse order now. Chelsea Bites, where can we find you? 
Hey, 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 what's good? My name is Chelsea Bites, and I was your rogue, Tabashi. And it was such a pleasure. You can find me just about anywhere, mostly on Twitch, where we're doing amazing stuff like this on INDG, playing Dungeons and Durags with an amazing DM. Oh my God. <laughs> But other than that, we do little things like this here and there. I like to role play on the side. We do variety games on my channel. You can follow me on Twitch, YouTube. I just put up my DM, my DM tips. I'm a new DM, so I got some pretty, uh, you know, out there tips just to help any new DMs out there. And, and any other things that you like help with on all of my socials. Definitely come check me out. Heck yeah, we're going to go over to J-Rock. What's good? Hey, what up? Uh, I'm J Rock the God. Y'all can find me everywhere, Twitch and Twitter, uh, by the same name, J Rock the God. I'm the guy who plays games using only his feet, occasion from speed runs to casual playthroughs to, as they said earlier, to just breaking ankles in Dead by Daylight. Uh, if you're into that type of thing, if you're into seeing games that you thought like might have been like a uh, a little bit challenged, and I'm here to like take the edge off of that here with like showing you that um, if you just have patience, that, that you can. You can simplify things, you know? That's what I'm about. Just trying to keep things simple for you. Um, you can find me here. Like I said, uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you once again for putting up with us. This has been a blast. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> about it. We're heading over to Cypher of Tear. Hey, y'all. Uh, you can find me here, obviously, now. So you can get two doses of me on Sundays, first at Rivals, which is 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Central. And then immediately following here, a half hour later for Dungeons and Durags, I have been your feral tiefling, Elvenia. And now I've got a direwolf as my buddy. Uh, you can also come over to my channel on Wednesdays. This Wednesday is the finale of Into the Motherlands. Uh, we have wrapped our Kickstarter. So once Dave is back from his much needed vacation, we will get to work on the Kickstarter, hit the ground running to bring you the best RPG that we can. And next year, you will have a book in your hand so you too can explore Vitoa. Um, Thursdays, you can hang out with me, B Dave, DJ Knight, and a lot of other cool people. Also, Mark Mir, who is uh, our favorite commander on the Citadel on the Black Dice Society, where I play a draw down pure blood hunter named Fen. And then uh, sometimes on my own channel, I may stream those things called video games. I don't know. On occasion, I do that. But yeah, follow me everywhere on the Twitters, on all my socials are Cypher of Tear, except for coffee because someone broke in there. So now it is not uh, Cypher of Tear anymore. But yeah, this was fun. And I just get to show up. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Last but certainly not least, again, the reason we're all here today in her first ever D uh, Dungeons and Dragons game and campaign, Milady Confetti. Hi. It's okay. That was so. Now that we're done, you know, the first episode, I say, I feel so much better. <laughs> I feel so much more comfortable. So thank you, CB, for being an amazing DM and coaching me through everything. <laughs> um, but I am Milady Confetti. You can find me, Milady Confetti, literally everywhere. That is both my YouTube channels. Um, that's Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Coffee, Patreon, Fan House, all the things. Um, I'm literally everywhere also on tiktok i'm literally everywhere um i play a lot of dead by daylight i also cosplay um pretty much anybody that i want to um what else do i do and now yeah i'm doing my first D, &D campaign and i'm having a lot of fun so far <laughs> and i have been uh your host your dungeon maestro critical bard omega jones here you can catch me on all my socials at critical bard uh, just like a milady confetti i'm everywhere um uh, what's happening for me? Um, literally in about uh, an hour or so, you can catch me on Saving Throw Show um, for a new uh, Pantheon Academia where I play Kawame Yakinyemi, who is a, a teenager with the uh, divinity of Anansi, the West African trickster god of stories. Fun guy. Uh, you can also catch me on Mondays during for Realmsmith Into the Mist that we're taking tomorrow off. I mean, yes, yes, tomorrow off. Uh, you can catch me on Fridays over on Rock Punch ATL for Tompo, which is uh, mm -hmm. based in the islands of Sina Una, which is a new D&D uh, &D, uh, campaign setting inspired by pre-colonial Filipino culture. Uh, two of the three uh, developers are actually in that show with us, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, and here, 
here, of course. And coming back soon, very soon, will be Let's Get Wild Mount uh, over on my channel for season two. So keep uh, looking out for that as well. Again, thank you all so much for being here. I did make one mistake. We will not be playing next week. I'm sorry. Next week is the 4th of July. And though I prefer a different flag, it's still the 4th of July. And we're going to do things. Uh, but we will be back on the 11th. So be here on June, July 11th uh, at 12.30 uh, Pacific uh, um, PM. Uh, and yeah, that's that. Again, if you like what you see, definitely subscribe to I Need Diverse Games. I Need Diverse Games is an amazing organization, nonprofit, just doing stuff for diversity and inclusion across the board. Uh, a big shout out to Tanya for getting this uh, organization together. Thank uh, I Need Diverse Games for letting us be on this channel. Um, again, subscribe to them. It also helps us. If you want to support us, the tip uh, command was just posted. Uh, feel free to d directly affect, you know, give things to our pockets because, you know, we want to eat too. Uh, but again, every single last thing is um, uh, very much appreciated. Thank you so much. We are going to raid uh, Dimples. That's Dimples. We're going to raid Dimples and Dice. Uh, Dimples is a really cool black creative who's currently DMing at Acquisitions Incorporated game right now on his uh, page. So we're going to check them out, show them some love. And as always, stay black, stay proud, stay awesome. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, see y'all. And that's that. Bye. Bye. Bye.